What's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. So the new iPhone 7 and 7 Plus cameras is pretty much getting rave reviews. A lot of people are even arguing that it's probably one of the best smartphone cameras ever made. In fact, DX Omar gave it an overall score of 86, which is pretty good overall. Now, uh, what we're specifically interested in is the uh, 7 Plus camera, which has the dual lens slash dual sensor configuration. Uh, basically, this allows you to do a real optical zoom uh, up to 56 millimeters or two times and that's definitely a handy feature if you want to get closer without compromising quality additionally with a new update uh, coming up uh, apple is going to launch a new camera app mode called portrait mode which is going to basically emulate the kind of shallow depth of field or bokeh effect that you get with large format sensors uh, such as in dslrs or mirrorless cameras so what we're going to do is actually compare the 7 plus camera versus probably one of the most uh, best uh, full frame dslr you can get right now the Canon 5D Mark IV which just came out and this is a full frame a DSLR now obviously there's a huge price difference between these two cameras but let's actually see how the iPhone compares against a full frame a DSLR in terms of overall photo quality and images and certainly how that bokeh effect yields in uh, direct head-to-head -head comparison so firstly we're just going to quickly glance at the specification differences between these two camera platform starting with the iPhone it has a third inch sensor um um, uh, the uh, secondary camera has a 3.6 inch uh, sensor and effectively you're looking at about 28 millimeters on the first camera slash lens configuration about 56 millimeters and uh, it has uh, basically a crop factor about 7.21 times now on uh, the uh, Canon side the 5D is obviously a full frame DSLR so uh, there is no crop it's basically using a 36 millimeters by 24 millimeter full frame a CMOS chip and of course with that large sensor pretty much uh, you would expect the photo quality and low light performance to be uh, quite a big difference between the two but surprisingly in most well lit environments the overall sharpness that uh, the 12 megapixel uh, sensor displays on the iPhone is fairly fantastic uh, we're using even a cheap uh, 50 millimeter Nikon lens an f1.8 and as you can see in terms of the uh, detail levels both are fairly comparable and obviously if you go to 100% uh, pixel to pixel ratio you can obviously render out a lot more sharper details with that 30 megapixel Canon sensor than with the 12 megapixel sensor but generally speaking for most people needs the uh, color rendition overall sharpness is really quite excellent on the iPhone but the big question is how does it compare uh, with a, a DSLR with a fast 50 millimeter lens in terms of portrait photography well the first thing that you should know that uh, basically Basically, the effect that you're getting on the iPhone's portrait photography mode is more or less a blurring effect that's happening in software. There's no actual optics that's creating that bokeh or out of focus elements like you can see on an actual large format uh, sensor and uh, wide open lens. You can see that with this example shots, all the out of focus elements are nicely circular, emulating the actual aperture of the uh, large format lens itself, and it, it gives that kind of dreamy look that everyone's used to with uh, traditional portrait photography on the same example uh, shot using the iPhone uh, basically there's a blurring effect that's happening and there's a depth sensor that's actually using both of the cameras to gauge uh, where the uh, foreground object is in relation to the background so there's actually some clever software that's happening and you actually can see this uh, depth of field effect in real time on the iPhone screen which is uh, definitely a cool feature there's been actually a couple of different smartphones in the past that have have had this selective focus slash uh, depth of field effect but you could never see that effect happening in real time so this is definitely unique to the iPhone 7 plus uh, but uh, we're just going to run through a couple of different examples uh, so you guys uh, can kind of tell the difference between a real shallow depth of field versus the fake emulation that's happening on the iPhone.
But really on that guys, uh, that's really it. Uh, generally speaking, I would have to say that the uh, fake uh, shallow depth of field effect that we're getting on the iPhone is actually pretty relatively convincing. It's definitely not going to sway real portrait photographers to shoot with iPhones now. I still think there's a uh, definite place for professional full frame DSLRs and even higher end uh, cameras that with even larger sensors because there's something that uh, things cannot emulate at this point. Eventually technology will get better and better and we'll find closer resemblance with smaller sensors uh, with uh, comparing it against DSLRs but for the time being there's still a pretty big difference between the two in terms of getting that shallow depth of field effect. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any specific questions let me know. Check out the description for more detailed information about everything we talked about and we'll see you later. Take care.